What else to look out for in coaching? Uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart right now. The caffeine hasn't hit me hard enough. Um, What's going on, everybody? Robinson here. I wanted to talk about the uh, the perils, the dangers, or the things you should look out for if you're hiring some sort of coach to help you maintain, you know, reach some sort of fitness goal, whether that's to lose weight, whether that's to be a competitor, or whatever the case may be. I know with the the era of social media, uh, there are a lot of sharks out there, snake oil salesmen and women, um, that are just out there to take your money and they don't care about really getting you any results so these are some of the things to look out for I would one see if and what certifications said person has to train um, now granted I am not certified so before you say well you're not certified and I try to go put my foot in my mouth let me just explain what I'm getting at certifications are somewhat can be valid, could be important, to the point where if a person has a certification, they have a base knowledge regarding a certain topic, right? So we stress having you know, a, a college degree or high school degree, some sort of base level of knowledge. Now, I used to be a certified trainer back in the day. I didn't see the value in holding the certification, so I stopped doing the CE courses and let it go. Um, and to a point that's important, but you also need to understand what's that person's pursuit of knowledge past the certification. So I spend literally hours of my day listening to podcasts. Actually, I was just listening to TNT podcast from the guys from First Form, uh, Mind Pump, uh, Lane Norton's Physique Science Radio, all of these. Um, I read a lot of books, I read a lot of articles, uh, and then obviously my own knowledge and practices within the gym over the past 20 years of me lifting and finding out anecdotally what works because we know science is a little bit probably a lot of bit you know behind especially in terms of maximizing muscle and losing fat or how to do both um, so you have, you have to take a look at that and the reason why you want somebody who has some sort of base knowledge is because a lot of times you get this person who looks great um, spends some time in the gym is genetically blessed and I'm not taking away the hard work they put in they don't know their ass from their elbow in terms of anything regarding nutrition or the human body or how to maximize results for each individual case. And they'll give you some generic cookie cutter plan and say, well, this is what worked for me and move on. And you'll ram your head into a wall 97 times doing what they said to do and you're not getting any results out of it. The other issue too on the certification end, I know many people who have certifications um, and this is things you should look out for. I'll give you a perfect example. I know someone who uses, a, was using a NASM certified trainer. A NASM is a pretty solid certification. They asked said trainer to show them how to do a Romanian deadlift. Pretty basic maneuver. We're not talking about Olympic lifting here. Said trainer couldn't show said person how to do it themselves. They had to bring up a YouTube video while in the gym this is not a remote trainer, this is an in-person, in in-the-flesh trainer, and showed them a YouTube video on how to ex execute a Romanian deadlift. That's really bad. Actually, that's horrible. Uh, and therefore, I would never recommend that trainer to anyone, but they were NASM certified. Okay, so that's one example. Uh, two, on the aspect of social media with people with large followings who have hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of followers. If you honestly think for the most part that you are being coached by said media personality, I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of you, if at, if at all, are being coached by said media personality. As remember back in the era of Devin Physique uh, and several other personalities, they have ghost writers, basically, who are writing all the training programs and they're splitting the profits between the two. Um, 
and then you go to events to talk to said person and they pretend like they know who you are and they're saying yeah good job man and they don't have a clue that you're even a client of theirs uh, so be very leery of hiring large media personalities I'm not saying in every instance um, if you do realize if somebody's a full-time coach or handling the amount of clients that you think they're handling I would say most likely if they're a full-time coach and it's really what they're doing 30 to 50 clients max is what they're gonna be able to handle I don't think people understand that if they're writing personalized customized macro plans meal plans and or training protocols whether it's powerlifting bodybuilding or just weight loss in general for fitness that that takes a lot of time based on check-ins based on time to lay those plans out because the coach is putting a lot of effort into checking what changes are happening with your body and adjusting everything based on what they're seeing or based on what they're being told because periodization and progressive overload are not just you know basic mathematical formulas and one exercise might work great for one person but may not work great for another person and that coach needs to understand and have the tools to go okay this is not working what do I need to adjust to make this particular person get this the result that we're looking for okay three if you're asking your coach questions and they really get defensive about it or cannot answer what why they're approaching a particular situation they are that's usually a sign they don't know what they're doing and they're applying the same principles to everyone four if you're sticking to the nutritional plan and the workouts and the cardio that you're supposed to be doing and your body is not responding you're being honest about it like you're you're not cheating you're not falling off the wagon you're sticking to everything the caloric intake to the T and you can't lose weight or drop body fat and your coach's only response is you're lying you're cheating you're not working hard enough you're not putting the time in and their only other solution is to drastically cut you know put you on 900 calories for say and up cardio even further with no understanding of maybe taking a diet break or a structure refeed that's also a problem most likely your coach doesn't know anything about what's going on with your body in terms of hormones leptin ghrelin um, and all the other stuff that go cortisol levels sleep water intake all that type of stuff has no clues to what's going on and their only solution is to constantly pound you into the ground most likely a false coach so all these are quick little tips and tricks that will give you some warning signs as to what you're looking at and one more I'll add in is you usually get what you pay for so if you pay cheap you usually get cheap if you have somebody who has no experience bodybuilding or doing physique or being a compete com uh, bikini competitor in fact they've never competed at all these are all more warning signs that you should probably stay away um, I'm not saying they need to win their pro card I'm not saying they have to be a nationally quali qualified competitor because I know a lot of great coaches that have competed um, have done okay haven't won pro, pro cards or have taken excuse me a really long time to win a pro card but have a passion for the sport and the knowledge and are extremely intelligent and they may not have the best genetics but they've maximized their potential to the best they can and it still might not be good enough to win a show those are the type of people that I like to hire if I'm working with a coach because they will maximize everything I'm doing because they understand more about the human body and they know how, how to maximize the fat loss and, and retain as much muscle as possible due to the struggles that they've gone through they have every tool in the toolbox and have, have put the time and investment into gaining the knowledge to maximize all their competitors I'm not necessarily saying that you know I look at how many pro cards that they've won but how many pro card winners have they produced is it consistency across the client base so they only highlighting a couple that are their best and everybody else sucks all things to look for all little tips and tricks to kind of set off the red flags if you're seeing any of this to run in the opposite direction all right guys and girls I hope this helps I'll talk to you soon